Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm a political scientist and spiritual advisor. I guess we're going to call this Apocalypse News. <laughs> I've been going through uh, books and just using my knowledge on history and politics, philosophy, uh, combining that with current events and culture to kind of paint a roadmap of what's been going on and why the world's falling apart. So last video I made a comment about the subversion of our American values and cultures and things being uh, the responsibility of the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. And uh, so I was hoping today to clarify that because what they're doing is directly from the art of war. Woo, let's read. <laughs> All right, this is a copy I got on Amazon and it's got like this cool gold stuff on here, but it is found uh, on it. There's a website of it. I'm sure there's more than one where you can find this information there for free. Good internet connection. You can also listen to it on audio on YouTube, but I find that it's not as beneficial because this is written like in like this quatrain form or parable or, or however you want to describe it. Um, so it's you're going to get more out of it typically with a book like this if you're looking at it written versus just listening to it. Which actually more than one person has told me that before. Like, I didn't understand it because I got an audio book. And I'm like, yeah. Like, this, this book needs like an instruction manual with it. Like, I'll be your guide. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's get serious. Never. All right. Six, weak points and strong. This book is uh, a roadmap, I guess. Hold up, let me just explain this one too. This book is um, not written as a direct guide to war. It is an outline of how war should be conducted. So it's not going to tell you exactly how many troops to send. It's not going to tell you where to go precisely it's just going to say these weak points these strong points whether something is strong or weak is the assessment of the military leader or many other factors that is relative okay now we'll begin <laughs> sun tzu he's the one who wrote this sun tzu said Whoever is first in the field and awaits the coming of the enemy will be fresh for the fight. Whoever is second in the field and has to hasten to battle will arrive exhausted. 2. Therefore, the clever combatant imposes his will on the enemy, but does not allow the enemy's will to be imposed on him. So, this is referring to the um, planning and what you can do and how you have the upper hand if you understand what's going on and what's coming. So in this instance, we can apply that to how we're currently being subverted by the Chinese can make 100-year plans. They have complete government control. Whereas in America, we are limited by that depending on the administration, which is going to change every four to eight years. Okay, three. By holding out advantages to him, he can cause the enemy to approach of his own accord. Or by inflicting damage, he can make it impossible for the enemy to draw near. So, what this is referring to is, two, well, twofold. Let's go for the, the first one. By holding out advantages to him, he can cause the enemy to approach of his own accord. They have made it favorable to do business in China, even though idealistically, I don't know why we're doing business with communists. Well, I, why we started. Anyways, we are going to them for this, um, and they ha can give us the advantage of cheap goods. 
So by inflicting damage, which we'll get into in two seconds, by inflicting damage, he can make it impossible for the enemy to draw near. And this infliction of damage is what I was referring to with sending uh, people from the CCP payroll into our universities to start teaching all these different ideologies that go through our culture and permeate in ways that are ripping us apart by um, gender and age and race and all these other like superficial things and things that made up things and new things and all this kind of stuff and how would we ever draw near to see who the true enemy is and to see that the only thing that's really dividing us all is definitely it's greed so if they can keep us confused and fighting within each other then how will we ever see the true enemy Rant over. Four. <laughs> if the enemy is taking his ease, he can harass him. If well supplied with food, he can starve him out. If quietly encamped, he can force him to move. This is also, uh, we won't get too much in the weeds in this video, but it's just talking about the advantages you can have if you know what's going on and the people you're trying to subvert or your enemy, they're left in the dark about. Okay. Five, appear at points which the enemy must hasten to defend. March swiftly to places we are not expected. Six, an army may march great distances without distress if it marches through country where the enemy is not. So this is referring to their positioning and just brief overview for this video, but they've made it their business to be friends with people who are not our friends and march through, like it says, an army may march great distances without distress if it marches through country where the enemy is not. Say when you're positioning yourself in a friendly territory within Asia, within the Middle East and such, and places in Africa where making yourself real friendly to places like that, it is going to get them closer and more rooted in. Okay, video's long enough. <laughs> There's much more to it. Oh, let's skip to, let's see here. This might be the last one on this, but I really wanted to hammer in what I'm talking about, about, of course you haven't, you probably haven't heard of this. Um, because you're not meant to. Number nine. O oh, divine art of subtlety and secrecy. Through you we learn to be invisible. Through you inaudible. And hence, we can hold the enemy's fate in our hands. They're trying to be invisible. They're trying to not be heard. And if they can succeed at that, then they can control everything. Much more to say on the art of war and much more to say on, just to wrap this up too, I want to mention that um, I'm going to be doing a um, another part on the same chapter of the fourth turning I did the other day because that was ended on a real depressing note because I realized I went through why uh, America was <laughs> in a downward decline, but I never gave the author suggestions on how to rebuild it up. So um, we'll go through that too. Thank you for watching. Be nice to each other. Bye.